Hi Clever Pickles, it's been a long time since I've done a video on this channel and I'm really excited today to be doing a stage 3 activity for you all. If you've been one of our younger viewers, well, sorry, this one might be a bit too hard for you guys today. <laughs> so if you're one of my stage 3 viewers, what we're going to do is I'm going to explain some things to you, I'm going to show you an activity and then you're going to go away and do it with partners today. So let's have a look at what our focus is and today we're looking at the Cartesian Plane. The Cartesian plane can be a little bit confusing when you first look at it, but once you realize what it actually is, it's super easy to use. The Cartesian plane was invented by this French guy that was born in like 1596 or something like that. He was a mathematician, he was a scientist, he was a philosopher, and I'm probably going to pronounce his name wrong. It was René Descartes. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's a French name, so it probably sounds really cool when you say it in French. But either way, he was the one that discovered it, and it was a way that he used, um, he was able to bring algebra and geometry together. And those words may not mean much when we do this, but essentially it's just a way of plotting coordinates onto a diagram. That's all we're looking at, pretty much. So you would have seen diagrams before that you may have used for uh, creating graphs, column graphs, line graphs, um, anything like that. And it would have looked like this. I don't have my grid paper today. You would have had like a zero amount here. You would have had amounts at the bottom, one, two, three, four, five, for example, and then up the top, maybe it counted differently. It might've been three, six, nine, 12. And then you might've plotted, you know, an amount. That's actually a portion of a Cartesian plane. The Cartesian plane extends into four different planes. So this value here that is zero, that's actually your point of origin. It's easy to remember because it looks like an O, it's a zero, it looks the same. So this is the starting point here really for anything that you're doing on this graph and we're going to use that same thing for the Cartesian plane. So if I'm using zero or O as my origin in the mid, that's the center point. I'm just gonna put a dot there to show you my center point. Now. Let's imagine that I'm doing this with a nice, neat and tidy ruler. I have two different axes. Each one is an axis. This is my X axis and this is my Y axis. X then Y. And these numbers across here would look exactly the same as what you did before. Let's stick with just single digits. One, two, three, four, five and going up one two three four five these are my positive values when we go into this portion of our axes into these other segments of the Cartesian plane they become negative numbers and we know what negative numbers are we hear them in the weather all the time especially if it's snowing you know it's minus five degrees outside doesn't mean that the weather's gone backwards that's just the value of the temperature and again, going this way, it's a negative number. Minus one, minus two, minus three, minus four, minus five. And it doesn't necessarily devalue anything. We're just plotting where something is in this space. So if you did this on grid paper, you would see lots of squares sitting behind here. So, well, I might draw a couple. Let's see if I can do this neat and tidy. Now, those numbers should be on that line. Three. <laughs> I just went over the top of it. Four, five, and if I'm going to go across this way, oh dear, that's a terrible line. Hopefully you guys do this neater than I do. So again, if I'm going to plot something on there, I want to see where the house is or whatever I can draw a house here. And it's on two, the x-axis is two, the y-axis is where three, over two, up three. But, you know, this point of origin here, zero, this might be like the school. Imagine that's the school. And I want to go to someone else's house that's actually over here. What is the position on this Cartesian plane that allows me to locate where it is? Well, I can see it's sitting sort of between four and five, depending on how nice and neat and tidy I've drawn this. And... 
It's anywhere between that value there, sorry, haha, <laughs> minus four, I should have said, between minus four and minus five. And down here we go to minus three, anywhere to minus five in that section on there. That's all it is. All you're doing is using negative numbers to talk about the position that it sits on the map. And it sounds tricky when you're talking about negative numbers and positive numbers, but like I said, once you realize that there's only there's four sections on that plane, on the two-dimensional plane, then you just need to use your positive and your negative numbers to be able to figure out where something is. So what I want you guys to do is hopefully you've got some grid paper. If not, you can draw one just like I did. And I'd like you to play a modified game of battleships. This one is called, and I'm just looking at my notes. <laughs> it's called, oh no, where's my notes gone? Sharks and seagulls. It's called sharks and seagulls. So what you're going to do is underneath this x-axis, down in this section here, you're going to draw five sharks. And above the x-axis, up the top here, you're going to draw five seagulls. Now you're going to do this with a partner and you don't want them to see where you are drawing it because the idea is, is that you're going to call out some coordinates back and forth to each other and see if you hit the shark or if you hit the seagull and whoever hits all of them first is the winner. So when you're doing this, you wanna make sure that you're away from the person that you're doing this with, maybe put a book up in between you guys and take a few minutes to just draw in. They don't have to be detailed, like, yeah. <laughs> That's a terrible shark. <laughs> That's my shark and it's down here. And I'm going to draw five of them, but you'll want to draw them pretty small um, so that they sit on a plot point. So that if someone said um, minus three, uh, minus two, <laughs> it's in that one spot. And when they hit it, just mark it off with a red dot or a red cross um, to know that it's done. And you need to tell them that they've hit it. So um, you flip a coin or do scissors, paper, rock or whatever to see who goes first and then take turns um, to see if you can get those coordinates right. So you need to call out the X axis first and then the Y axis second. And when you are the one that's doing the calling out, so let's say I've said to my friend, oh, I wanna do three, negative four, which is down here somewhere. I need to write that down. So I'm gonna put three, comma, negative four so that I remember I've called that one out. And on my page, I might even mark that as well to show that I've already called out that number. They said it's a miss. I'm not gonna call out that number again. Otherwise, it's just gonna take up so much time. So have a go with that with your partner. And then you can probably press pause on this video. Then you can come back to the video. Okay, so you've played your game for a little while now. I hope you enjoyed that and were able to actually hit some of those seagulls and sharks. Um, I think it's important that you guys know that there are some very real world applications that we're going to use the Cartesian plane. So an example of that would be mapping out the classroom. If I wanted to put my mat in the middle of the room, that's my point of origin in the middle there, and I wanted to design my classroom and draw where I'm gonna put all the furniture. I could use a Cartesian plane to do that and I could measure out my meters and see how many things would fit in my classroom. Um, these are used for maps, for satellite maps all over the world because you know there's no corner in the world. There's gonna be some point of origin and then mapping out from that. So they might use them in the in the Navy when they've got ships out on the ocean. They, they might use them in battles. Um, to map out, you know, the terrain of where they're going to go and they're going to talk about, you know, where they're at and where they've got to travel to in those different quadrants, the, those different, the four sections that are there. So this isn't something we use just to play games. These are things that are actually used in real life. A lot of, um, oh, what are they called? Um, <laughs> archaeologists. A lot of archaeologists use these when they go on fossil digs. 
So they might find something, one particular bone, but then as they dig out further and further, they'll find more and more and more and they need to mark down exactly where they find them. So they'll draw something like this and they'll draw in the different dinosaur bones and where they find them so that later when they're going through their research, they remember how exactly far apart those things are because you know you might find the tailbone all the way down here and then the jawbone all the way over this side and they're trying to figure out how it fell down how big it is and you know what happened to it at the time those are the kinds of things that you could use a cartesian plane for so i hope you enjoyed that there's going to be another activity that i'll attach to this which is using some coordinates to create a picture so if your teacher wants to use that that's attached to this as well hope you enjoyed it guys thanks for watching i'll see you in the next video bye